What is going on guys, Ben Glean here coming back at you with another video. Today we are rebuilding the Baltimore Ravens in this fantasy style where anything goes. We try to trade for whomever in any way that we can possibly do so. And I believe last time in Madden 17 when I rebuilt the Baltimore Ravens, it was the Blockbuster Trade Edition where we built a super team based off like the craziest trades I could do. And I'm not sure that I want to do this this time or do that this time. Like I kind of do, I kind of don't. So we'll kind of see what goes on. Top players are Marshall Yonda, Michael Pierce. And Michael Pierce, for me, kind of came out of nowhere. And I guess he's, you know, one of the highest rated players on the Ravens, clearly in top three. And Jimmy Smith. There's a, there's rumor going around the league uh, between delusional individuals that Joe Flacco is somehow elite. Well, uh, I, don't, I don't know. Maybe I'll pop his numbers up on the screen for you guys. Here we go. We have uh, five touchdowns to eight interceptions for nearly 1,200 yards. Uh, and this is, you know, going to be week seven, I believe. So in, I think, seven, six or seven games, Joe Flacco has uh, fewer touchdowns than games played with more interceptions than games played with a 70 quarterback rating for nearly 1,200 yards in those games. Now, I don't know about you guys. Those don't really seem like elite numbers to me personally. I'm no quarterback expert. But I would say that's below average, if anything. I would say he was average before, and then I would say this is definitely on the border of complete dog shit and below average. But um, yeah, let's go find a new quarterback for the Ravens to build their new team around. Get them back to the promised land of, you know, the late 90s, early, well, not maybe not late 90s, but kind of late 90s to early uh, to mid 2000s with Ed Reed and Ray Lewis. Let's go ahead and build just a sick defense. You know what's kind of funny thinking about it now? Like, you have some of the most prolific defenses in NFL history. Like, the Steelers with the Steel Curtain and the Dolphins with the Killer Bees. And, um, you know, the Chicago Bears with the Monsters of the Midway. And then, I don't think there's a name for that Ravens team, but like... Ed Reed is one of the best safeties ever. Ray Lewis, one of the best linebackers ever. They had a really, really good defense that kind of carried their team through the Super Bowl where they unfortunately beat my favorite team, the New York Giants. But, uh, wow. I don't know. Maybe we should come up with a name. If you guys have a name for what that Ravens defense should be called, go ahead and drop that in the comments down below. But let's go ahead and get into this. So we got Ronnie Stanley. We got Nico Saragusa. Ryan, Ryan Jensen? I believe so. Ryan Jensen, Marshall Yonda, Austin Howard. You got the 48-year-old Ben Watson, Crockett Gilmore, Nick Boyle, got Mike Wallace, Chris Matthews, the Super Bowl beast for the Seahawks a little while ago, Joe Flacco, of course, Ryan Mallett, who could forget about the uh, big-armed righty, Terrence West, Danny Woodhead, looks kind of like a crack addict. Then again, I have my moments, so we're going to go away from him. Uh, Kenneth Dixon, Javorius Allen, a.k.a. Buck, the speedy Brashad Perriman, and Jeremy Macklin, we're not going to touch on Michael Campanera, even though I just did. And it's interesting because Tony Saragusa, actually uh, a Ravens defensive lineman. Defensive, like, you know, tackle, nose tackle. Uh, and they have the same last name. And here's another Saragusa. I wonder if there's any relation. Um, I would guess that there is. I don't know. And then, you know, you got Peter Bulware. But um, here we go on the defense. T. Sizzle old, unfortunately, has to go. The future is Tim Williams and Tyus Bowser. C.J. Mosley's an absolute beast. You know... Kamale Correa is, is, I think he's pretty good as well. I just don't know where he's going to play. And this defensive line is really odd. It's a 3-4 defensive line where Brandon Williams is playing like an edge, which I don't really feel like he fits. It's in, it looks like a 4-3 right now, which is definitely not what they play with this personnel. Chris Wormley is a decent rookie. Of course, you got Jimmy Smith, Brandon Carr, Tavon Young. Uh, you got the rookie, Marlon Humphrey, Alabama. I don't know what we're going to do with Ladarius Webb. Eric Weddle's got to get traded. I don't know what we're going to do with Tony Jefferson. He's pretty young, so I'll probably hold on to him. He's only 25. Just got to boost that zone coverage, and maybe he could be a really good player for us. But let's go ahead and start making some trades. It's just unfortunate that this team is really so old that we need to bring in a future because, like, this team is not a Super Bowl caliber, caliber team right now, not even close. Uh, and everyone on it is pretty much, like, 29 to 35. And that just won't work. You know, they're going to regress and they're going to go down in overall. So, I mean, we got to figure out a way to trade a lot of these players who are close to 30 um, for better, younger players. And that could be a challenge. 
So with this trade, I'm trading Joe Flacco, a 2018 four, for a 2018 first round pick from the Jets. I mean, I think the Jets are going to be pretty poor in this simulation, so I'm fine with trading uh, our man here, Average Joe, for, you know, a pick that we can maybe turn into a superstar quarterback somewhere down the line. So, I mean, I'll do that any day of the week. All right, with this trade, I'm trading Brandon Carr, Austin Howard, and a 2019 three for a 2018 three, as well as a 2019 first round pick from the Houston Texans. Hopefully, they're really bad then, although I don't really expect them to be with the young emerging uh, Deshaun Watson, he developed super quickly in this game, so I don't really think we'll be able to do much there. But I think the first round pick still is going to have a really, really great amount of value. So there's always that. So I'm trying to build more around this 3-4 that the Ravens have going here. And I think adding Fletcher Cox and playing him at right end is going to do wonders for that. We're trading Marshall Yonda, one of the best offensive linemen over the past decade, easily. Eric Weddle, same deal, but at free safety, or really overall um, at safety in general. He's been tremendous for the Chargers, and now I guess he's been pretty good with the Ravens as well, even getting over 30. And a second round pick next year, though, for Fletcher Cox is going to get it done. One of the best, best interior defensive linemen in the league. Fletcher Cox is an absolute beast. All right, with this trade, we are trading for one of the best young up-and-coming receivers in the NFL in Stefan Diggs, a really young player out of Maryland. This is only his third Maybe, no, nah, I think it's his third season in the NFL. Already one of the best. He's tremendous in all facets of playing wide receiver, jump balls, route running. He's a really, really good player is my point. We're trading Jimmy Smith, T-Sizzle, and a third-round pick in order to get him. Terrell Suggs has been insane for the Ravens. I didn't mention him earlier because uh, he was still on the team. I was trying to say players that were already departed off the team. But obviously Terrell Suggs was an absolute beast. Elvis Dumerville for a little while on the Ravens was really talented. Um... Not, Terrell Suggs doesn't have a lot of value around the league. He's up into his 30s now. He's regressing with every season, uh, in the game at least. And then Jimmy Smith, I thought, is, you know, he's 29. He's going to continue to regress in the game. Stefan Diggs is going to continue to get better. He could be a 99 overall by the end of this for us. So I thought this was a pretty good trade for us, trying to uh, revamp that receiving core. And uh, I thought Stefan Diggs would be an excellent place to start. All right, with this trade, we are trading Mike Wallace and a seventh round pick for Brandon Scherf from the uh, Washington Redskins. Really good young offensive lineman. We could play him at tackle or guard, play a lot of tackle at Iowa. We could easily move him there if we want to, but uh, he's pretty much the Marshall Yonder replacement at this point. With this trade, I'm trading Chris Wormley, Ian Williams, and a third round pick for Carl Joseph, one of the best young safeties in the NFL. He fills our safety void. Obviously, we needed a safety. We do have Tony Jefferson currently a strong safety, but free safety is wide open. Tony Jefferson doesn't really have the free safety profile, if you will. Not that Carl Joseph does either, but I think Carl Joseph could better fit the position, uh, even though he's more of an in-the-box guy. I think he's only 5'10". Maybe he's like Earl Thomas out there, or maybe we can turn him into Earl Thomas. That would obviously be the dream for, you know, Raiders fans. And in this case, Ravens fans. Reigning Ravens. Reigning Raiders, right? You know? What? All right, that trade actually went through really, really easily. It's Darius Smith and Patrick on Wassour. On Wu... On Wuasor, I actually I don't know how to say his name. That's one of the few players in the NFL I just don't know how to say his name. But we're trading him from Ster or for Sterling Shepard. In my opinion, easily a top five slot receiver in the NFL, even though it's just his second year and he is injured right now. Uh, should be back next week, hopefully. I think he has the top three most yards in the slot over the past two years of any player in the league. Really, really good young player. Super happy to add him to the team. Huge fan of him, even when he was at Oklahoma and I was a Texas fan. I'm like, he's just an absolute beast. So now we're starting to develop a receiving core. And I think Jeremy Macklin, unfortunately, has to go. He's just 29. I can't deal with that. Oh my Todd. No, it didn't go through. Okay, I can totally do this, though. I don't think this is going to go through for the fourth. It doesn't. It's even less. Okay. Um, hmm. All right, Anthony Levi Sr. for a fourth round pick from the Cowboys. He's terrible. He doesn't play. And I think I'll be able to use that fourth round pick as value to get one Todd Gurley, a.k.a. God Turley. Might as well. I don't I don't know. It's not really a nickname, but we're going to make it one. So I got to back out and actually get that pick to register. All right, there we go. Adding in the fourth round picks were picks. Fourth round pick works. Jeremy Macklin... Ben Watson, and a fourth for Todd Gurley. I really wanted Leonard Fournette. I was going to trade for him next year, but I think Todd Gurley is just 
Like, he's right there with Leonard Fournette in terms of actual ability. Ty Gurley's an absolute beast. I think he's an excellent addition to this team. And uh, now I can trade Terrence West. I can trade Danny Woodhead. I can do a number of things. Kenneth Dixon I actually really like, but, I mean, he's not going to be our starter. All right, Crockett Gilmore, Terrence West for a first-round pick from the Giants. I'll take that easy. And now I'm going to go ahead and try and trade uh, Danny Woodhead. And, I mean, I'll figure out somebody else I don't want on this team. And then we're going to get uh, right into the simulation and into season number two. Willie Henry and Danny Woodhead for a first-round pick from the Packers. Now, that might not have a ton of value because uh, the Packers are actually decent, especially with Aaron Rodgers. But we have a decent number of first-round picks, clearly. So we have four. I'd like another two if I can find one. I just don't know if I'll be able to finagle that. All right, Carl Davis in a seventh for a two from the Cardinals. Now, I wonder if I could somehow get this Cardinals first-round pick. Um, there's a chance. Otherwise, I'll probably just go for the three. All right, I thought they'd have interest in Brent Urban, and they just don't. So we're going to go ahead, you know, rearrange the team, switch positions and things like that so we can maximize XP, and uh, then go ahead and get into this simulation. All right, this is going to be the team. I think it looks decent overall. Move Brandon Scherf over to uh, right tackle. Todd Gurley is new. Ryan Mouse is going to be the starting quarterback. And I was going to trade Brashad Perriman, but I'm like, all right, he's not a bust yet. It's like kind of like a Kevin White situation where he hasn't really touched the field enough. Stefan Diggs, Sterling Shepard uh, are all new on the defensive side of the ball. Of course, uh, Tim Williams is now going to start. Matthew Judon, I was going to trade, but I'm like, all right, we're going to move Tyus Bowser over to middle linebacker and then reassess uh, for the start of season two. Marlon Humphrey's going to start as a rookie. We got Tavon Young. Ladarius Webb needs to go, but defensive line looks really, really good. Fletcher Cox, Michael Pierce, and Brandon Williams. I'm ready to go, so I guess I'll go ahead and see you guys at the midseason mark. All right, so at the midseason mark, we are three and five. Looks like Ryan Jensen is our, our top free agent, and Ryan Mallett's not even our starting quarterback. We got Kyle Sloter was signed. I don't know. It is what it is. He's kind of sick, maybe. I don't know. Defensively, thank God Tyus Bowser's still starting. Uh, not a whole ton of XP for a lot of these players, but a decent amount for a decent amount of players. Seahawks, no, Seahawks. Steelers lead the division at 6-2, Seahawks. The S and the E's got me. I can't read. <laughs> uh, I gotta memorize stuff and I gotta guess at the names before I go. I'm actually illiterate. But uh, let's go ahead and re-sign Ryan Jensen and whoever else might be here that I have interest in. Brent Urban, no thanks. All right, Ryan Jensen is back. And you know what? I don't usually remark on this, but I'm going to in this case. Our specialists, we have Justin Tucker. First of all, hook him horns. Second of all, the best kicker in NFL history. Don't at me. But if you'd like to, twitter.com slash Designs. Every follow helps. We also have Sam Cook at punter. Decent player, 35 years old. Uh, has been a good punter for a long time. So we got some really good return specialists, not going to lie. Even Michael Campanera, I think he has a return touchdown this season. So he's not that bad. Let's go ahead and simulate now to the playoffs. So we missed the playoffs. Didn't expect to make the playoffs. Didn't even want to. 7-9 is a way better record than I wanted to, to have. I wanted a higher pick, so that's kind of annoying. Kyle Sloter, <laughs> 4,345 yards, 30 touchdowns, 17 interceptions. Not even a bad season, to be honest. Todd Gurley played really well, 1,200 yards, 10 touchdowns. Kenneth Dixon had 13 touchdowns. I'm tired of these backup running back touchdown vultures, to be honest. Receiving Sterling Shepard, almost 1,000 yards, uh, 800, actually on 96 catches to three touchdowns. Rashad Perriman had 13 touchdowns in the slot. What are you doing? 943 yards. Stefan Diggs, over 1,000, but only three touchdowns. Max Williams had nine touchdowns. Dude, what is, what is going on? I'm okay with it, though. Decent performance from the offensive line. I would say above decent. C.J. Mosley, 137 tackles. Led the team. Tackles for loss. 11 for Michael Pierce. 10 from Fletcher Cox. 10 for Brandon Williams. Quarterback sacks. We have 15 from Fletcher Cox. Dominating. 8 for Matthew Judon. 4.5 for Michael Pierce. Interceptions. 4 for C.J. Mosley. 3 for Ladarius Webb. He's got to go. He can't be on the team. 2 for Fletcher Cox. For fumble or Force fumbles. And then only 4 total fumble recoveries for the entire team with one defensive touchdown from Tavon Young. Yearly awards goes to Aaron Rodgers, MVP of the 11-5 and five Packers. I doubt we're going to see any Ravens. AFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Tom Brady. No Ravens. A Defensive Player of the Year, Justin Houston. 
No Ravens. Offensive rookie of the year goes to Deshaun Watson. Kyle Sloter at number three. Could you imagine if he won it? I had to stick with him. I really don't want to. Defensive rookie of the year goes to Miles Garrett of the two and fourteen Browns with Tyus Bowser at number six. I was really hoping that he'd win. It's understandable that he did not. Let's go ahead and simulate to the offseason. All right, free agents available. We have 26.84 mil to potentially spend. Drew Brees, as always, is there. I never have any interest in these first round guys. You very, very rarely see anyone actually worth going after. EJ Gaines is definitely someone worth going after, though. Although, I just, th I think I'm going to pass. I, I don't want him. Teddy Bridgewater's there. That's somebody else worth going after, potentially. Let's go ahead and advance the week, though. I'll probably just see you guys for the draft. All right, so here we are in the draft. We have the number three overall pick, um, as well as the 10th. So we have two top 10 picks. And this draft class isn't tremendously loaded, 22, 29. Uh, so I might as well just trade down a lot. Not fully sure on what I'm going to do yet, though. With my first pick, I'm going to take Sedgwick Simpson out of Florida State. 6-2, 4-3-2 speed, tremendously quick with the three cone with the 20 yard shuttle. I think Sedgwick Simpson's gonna be a really, really good player. You know, you can think of some pretty good Florida State cornerbacks that have come out. Deion Sanders, Xavier Rhodes, there, there are a few of them. Hopefully Sedgwick Simpson is the next in line. He's got glasses on, so maybe he's educated. Maybe he just can't read and he's trying to look smart. And holy shit, he's a beast. He's an 85 overall. I have never seen anyone close to that for a non-quarterback. Actually, I've seen 84s, but holy hell. Cedric Simpson is an absolute monster. 96 speed, 87 man, 84 zone, high play record of 74 coming out, 97 excel, 88 agility, 84 press. Oh my god. We drafted number three. He's ranked one in the class. Normal development, but like I'm not even mad. This is, this is one of my favorite players I've ever drafted. 85 overall. If he was an 83 overall, I'd be freaking out. And he's an 85. If he was an 82, like, that's... That, I don't think you understand the gravity of how insane that pick just was. Let's come back and take our franchise quarterback. Chance Chung out of Florida. We took a Florida State player. Let's even it out. Take a Florida player. A minus throw power. B plus throw accuracy short. B throw accuracy deep. He can sling it. Here we go. Chance Chung. 79 overall, normal development, 22 years old, 85 deep accuracy, 79 medium, 89 short, 90 throw power, 81 throw on the run, 75 speed. He's a really good player. He's ranked 18 in the class. We took him at 10. I'm not mad about this pick at all. I think his um, accuracies are already incredible. It's only the throw power you wish was a bit higher. But like other than that, really, really good player. 90 throw power isn't even all that bad. And we could potentially upgrade that, even though that would be kind of expensive. But uh, I think that's a tremendous pick, and this draft is going really, really well. This pick I'm trading, or with this trade, I'm trading picks. My 22nd overall pick this year, a 5 and a 6 next year, for the number one overall projected pick from the Browns, as well as their second overall, um, or I guess it's probably their second overall selection in there with their second round pick. So a 1 and 2 from the Browns next year is the long and short of that. And hopefully I can come back and finish this draft out strong. I'm in between Ben Storner and Josh Hurt, uh, two offensive linemen with this pick. The reason it's so close is because even though you see Josh Hurt and you're like, B-plus run block, it could be like up to an 89. And C-plus pass block isn't all that bad. Ben Storner kind of in the same boat. The reason I'm leaning towards Storner is because he put up 37 reps of 225, which is going to be incredibly strong, and Josh Hurt just didn't come that close to that number, so I think I'm going to go with Sorner here. I think he's just going to be a little bit better for us in the long term. Higher overall rating. Here he is. 80 overall, quick development. I'll take this any day of the week. 89 strength, 85 run block, 82 pass block, 92 impact blocking, only 62 awareness, so we can boost that up. Quick development is critical. We'll take a look and see where Hurt goes, and um... We'll see what overall he ends up being. He goes to the Seahawks. All right, we'll check them out after the draft. With this pick, I'm going to take DeAndre Norman out of Penn State. 6'4", good top three skills. A little bit slower than you'd like, but I think he's going to be a good fourth receiver in our mix. So here we go. 73 overall slow development is not exactly what I look for. He isn't bad by any means. Just got to get route running and awareness up. Probably release as well. Um, it's released only 79. He's not a bad player. That slow development is just going to hurt him. 
at the end of the day, he's exactly what I want him to be, which is a good four, but uh, he's nothing special. With this pick, though, I'm taking a player that I actually had watched, Xavier Murphy. Not Xavier with, just with an X or just Xavier Murphy. He's Xavier Murphy. He wants you to know exactly how that's pronounced. Out of North Dakota, he's another 6'4 guy. His top three skills are significantly better, and he's faster than the last player we went ahead and drafted. So here we go, Xavier Murphy. I totally forgot I had this guy on my board, and I didn't have the other guy on my board. I should have traded down for a first. But here we are anyway, Xavier Murphy, Xavier Murphy. Now, he's a 73 overall, but he's a little bit different because he has quick development and very, very similar attributes um, to the player we just drafted. That quick development is going to be leaps and bounds better than slow because it's leaps and bounds better than normal, in fact. He's ranked number 53. We took him at 52, so right in that range. I think really quality pick for a guy who is supposed to go in the third round. We go ahead and snag him in the second. I've got these two offensive linemen lined up for the next couple picks. They both have C pass block, but I think they're good value for the fifth and sixth round if they stay available. Todd Suckup, I guess we'll call him like the cousin or brother, I, Ryan Suckup. I don't know how he's related, if at all, which he's a made-up player, so he's not. 71 overall, ranked number 124. We took him at 138. It's a decent value pick. He's just not going to be anything special. When you're taking these lower round picks, because we're not doing like an actual franchise the way that you normally might, we're not going for players. Oh, that's a good value pick. We're going for players. We want them to be superstars. We want to put them in right away. Wesley Kirk Hughes, hopefully, is that guy. And he is an excellent pick, number 55 in the entire draft. We took him at 170. That pass block is really low. He's a good player. Awareness, we just got a boost in pass block, and he's going to be sick out of Western Kentucky. So I'll try to play him year one. But um, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what his, his ceiling is. I don't think it's that high. All right, draft recap. Last time I talked about this, I totally forgot. We'll go to the Seahawks. We'll see where Josh Hurd is. He's an 80, and he has normal. So would you rather an 80 overall with normal, or would you rather um, an 80 overall with quick? I think we made the right decision. Just got, you know, luck of the draw. So we should have a couple of rookies coming in to start right away. It was a decent draft class. I think it was pretty good, actually. Decent is, is undervaluing how good of a draft it was. But um, decent amount of XP for a lot of these players. Rashad Perriman should have a lot. Only 16K. Well, that's not like a small amount, but it's not as much as I would have wanted. I think we're going to start Kirk Hughes over Nico Saragusa. We'll upgrade and trade on that one. This team's starting to come together. All right, so there are a few new developments, and I really do mean developments. Max Williams, slow development. I don't know if he got this or if he just sucks because... He has slow development. I don't know if he had that at the start or not. Uh, Rashad Perriman, I guess, made the Pro Bowl last year. So he was gifted quick development. I guess 13 touchdowns probably contributed to that. And we went ahead and drafted two receivers to play over him. And then defensively, uh, I switched around Brandon Williams and Michael Pierce. I think Brandon Williams just can't be on the team anymore. He has quick development. He's an 84. I moved him to defensive tackle. He's still not even the high overall. He's getting older. As you can see, he is regressing, which does kind of stink. Tony Jefferson, slow development. I looked to see how he got this because I didn't remember him having it at the start. Uh, and he didn't get the one interception that he wanted to get. So, I mean, I mean, it's just going tits up at this point. I got to make moves. Tony Jefferson got to go. Brandon Williams got to go. Uh, Max Williams got to go. I need better players. All right, so with this trade, I'm trading Brandon Williams a second next year and a fourth this year for Jamal Adams from the New York Jets. He's going to be a new starting strong safety and I'll probably switch him with Carl Joseph to be honest. I just kind of like the dynamic of Jamal Adams playing free safety a little bit better. And now I'm going to try and trade Tony Jefferson um, for a defensive tackle, preferably a nose. I'll take a K-1 short for Tony Jefferson and Kamalei Correa. That's, that's easy. Okay. <laughs> he is 29, so I'm not getting younger, but I am getting better at the position. That's nice. Jamal Adams came with 36,000 XP. That's just pretty cool. So we got Jamal Adams at 87. He's now a 91. Decent. But this is the team we're going to go ahead and roll with for season number two. It's actually pretty good. I'm actually going to move Jamal Adams to free safety. I don't know why we have John Luke Picard playing fucking fullback here. It's 61 overall. I can go and grab an undrafted free agent rookie who's a higher overall at fullback, I guess. Here he is. Lane Yoder, 81 overall. Welcome to the team card but this is the actual team i don't know if i mentioned this jamal adams 98 zone i just upgraded that too but uh team looks pretty good 
nothing nothing crazy yet, but we gotta have these rookies really come out and play. Max Williams is our tight end. I don't know, I didn't change it. Maybe I'll trade for Evan Ingram or something real quick. All right, Ladarius Webb in a first for Evan Ingram. I'm fine with trading it. I don't have a ton of picks outside the top two rounds. Uh, <laughs> in fact, I don't have any. It'll work. This is the team. We're going straight to the midseason mark. See you. Nope. See you. Nope. See you there. Wow. All right. Midseason mark. We are six and two under new rookie quarterback Chance Chung. Hey, I'll take it. Six and two is not bad. Ty Gurley is a free agent. That's that's bad. If we can't resign him, which I think we should be able to. I think that's going in with the right mindset. We can resign him for sure. We also have to deal with Stefan Diggs, Brandon Scherf, C.J. Mosley, Michael Pierce. Max Williams can walk. I have no interest in re-signing him. These top five, though, yes. All right, so Michael Pierce, C.J. Mosley, Brandon Scherf is not back, but Stefan Diggs and Ty Gurley are. Brandon Scherf wants a little bit more salary, so that's not too hard. Okay, wow, we went 12-4 and four under a bunch of rookies starting. That is pretty cool. We didn't win the division, though. <laughs> okay. Let's check out the stats, see who did what, how we got here. Chance Chung in his rookie season. Really phenomenal rookie season, if I have to say. Almost 4,600 yards for the rookie out of Florida. How many times can I say rookie? 33 touchdowns, only 11 interceptions. That's great for a rookie. That's, that's pretty good for anybody, to be honest. Uh, Todd Gurley's got to stop fumbling. But other than that, nearly 1,300 yards, 11 touchdowns. Kenneth Dixon had 10 touchdowns. Stefan Diggs, almost 100 catches for 1,250 yards, 10 TDs. Evan Ingram, 8 touchdowns, 817 yards. Rookie out of North Dakota, Xavier Murphy, 1,100 yards, eight touchdowns. Sterling Shepard, 673 yards, three touchdowns. Blocking, offensive line performed, I would say pretty good, pretty well. CJ Mosley led our team in tackles with 116 tackles for a loss, 13 from Fletcher Cox, 10 for K1 Short. Quarterback sack, 16 for Fletcher Cox, 10 and a half for K1 Short, seven for Matthew Judon and Tim Williams. Interceptions, four for Jamal Adams, four for rookie Sedgwick Simpson out of Florida State. Forced fumbles, we have two from Fletcher Cox, two from Tyus Bowser. Defensive touchdowns, one from rookie Cedric Simpson. Man, what a pick he is. MVP goes to Tom Brady. Chance Chung at number five in his rookie season. AFC Office Player of the Year goes to Tom Brady. Chance Chung also at number five. I imagine we'll see him at Offensive Rookie of the Year. But Defensive Player of the Year goes to Ryan Shazier. Fletcher Cox at number three. CJ Mosley at 10. Offensive Rookie of the Year, of course, is Chance Chung. Couldn't be anybody else. Xavier Murphy, though, at number three. Show me Defensive Rookie of the Year. It is, of course, Sedgwick Simpson. What a class of rookies. Amazing impact makers. Offensive Rookie of the Year. Defensive Rookie of the Year. Let's see what this XP situation is like. 52K for Chance Chung. Only 12K for Xavier Murphy. Shot Perriman got much. Not much, but not a decent amount. 45, nearly 46K for Stefan Diggs. Um, 25k for Evan Ingram. Offensive line altogether pretty much had a lot of XP. I meant to trade Nico Siragusa. I forgot. I wanted to start Wesley Kirk Hughes. I thought he had quick development. Did he not? I could have sworn. Did I drop someone with quick development? Not you. You have slow. How do you have slow? Since when? Are these people just getting slow development? What is going on? Sorner started though. I could have sworn I drafted someone with quick on the offensive line. Guess not. Defensive, well, I mean, obviously, Storner did. He had quick. But I thought I drafted somebody later that did. I guess not. Defensively, um, 31K for Cedric Simpson is our main outlier. All the rest, not that much in the XP department. But we're going to go ahead and use that XP, upgrade the team, and then I'll uh, go ahead and take on the Titans in the wild card. This is the upgraded team. Chance Chung is up to an 88 with confidence. I haven't even touched his awareness yet. And that's going to make that shoot up. Receiving core is looking really good, in my opinion. Offensive line, same deal. Defensively, though, the linebacking core is still extremely weak, I would say. Tim Williams is pretty difficult to upgrade. So is Matthew Judon, despite them being fairly young players. Getting their power move, or their dominant pass rush move, I should say, upgraded, is tremendously expensive. It's like 2 to 3K just to get that upgraded. And they're young players. Tim Williams is in his second season in this particular rebuild. Tyus Bowser, I think, would be better on the outside, clearly, but I want him to play at middle linebacker. I want to make him work. He's a hybrid player. I thought I could do it. 
He's just not going up at a fast enough level. I feel like I could move Tyus Bowser to the outside and trade either Tim Williams or Matthew Judon for a better outside linebacker or pass rusher. Michael Pierce, I'm not sure what he's doing at defensive tackle. He's, or excuse me, at left end. He's not really getting upgraded. I feel like he would be a better fit at defensive tackle. So I might trade K1 short in the offseason for an actual edge rusher and move Michael Pierce to defensive tackle. Cedric Simpson's playing up to a 90 in his rookie season. He's an absolute monster. This is one of my favorite picks I've ever had. He is a 90 in his rookie season. Here we go, though. Wildcard playoff round. Please, can we advance to the divisional and beat the Tennessee Titans? We do. And now we face in Pittsburgh at Heinz Field the Pittsburgh Steelers in the divisional to go on to the conference championship. They won the division. Can we prove that we're the better team and advance to the conference championship? We do because we are. 12 and 4 Ravens against the 11 and 5 Kansas City Chiefs. Let's go straight to the Super Bowl. Here we go. Can we do it? We do. It's the Birds versus the Birds. Ravens Falcons, both 12 and 4 in the Super Bowl in Minneapolis. We're closer barely. <laughs> So we're going to have more fans there. Not true. Uh, I'm just going to make false statements and then, uh, and then counter or contradict them. I don't even know what I'm saying. Uh, should we upgrade before we go in? Yeah, let's do that. This is the upgraded team. It's nothing special. It's pretty much, well, I mean, it, it's getting to be a special team, but it's nothing special comparatively to the team that we just had. Uh, I used some of my coach XP. I was waiting on quarterback so I could get him to be an absolute monster. And he is. To be fair, like we're underselling him comparatively to Sedgwick Simpson, and he should have quick development, but he he doesn't, which is unfortunate. His accuracies are incredible. Just I haven't touched awareness, haven't touched play action, haven't touched throw power. Don't know if I'm ever going to. We're going to the Super Bowl though. Here we go. What overall are we? 92 to the Falcons. 90. 92 in our second year. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. But here we go. Birds versus birds. The avian race is coming to fruition. They're going to rule, just like that prediction I made several years ago. The birds will take over. What am I talking about? All right, let's just go. <laughs> All right, here we go. Super Bowl time. We got Justin Tucker, so I expect no missed field goals or extra points. It is 7-7 already. Now it's 10-7 as Justin Tucker converts. We are down, however, 14-10, but we're going to make it 13-14. And now 21-14. Now 28-17, and we're in the fourth quarter. This is crunch time. Please, Ravens, 35-20, 35-27, finish, 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 and we do. And in year number two, the Baltimore Ravens are Super Bowl champions, and we'll play a third season and try to repeat. This is a pretty good team. I'm not going to lie. Our rookies really came through for us. Chance Chung at quarterback, Cedric Simpson at cornerback. Who else was a drafted rookie? Xavier, whatever his last name is, doesn't matter. But yeah, it's second season, it's successful. It's three S's in a row. Don't know why that's notable at all. It really isn't. Um, Jamal Adams has played well. I mean, we have just a really good team. It's just kind of now addressing the linebackers and seeing what we can do. Todd Gurley is Super Bowl MVP. That was what I was waiting for. 26 carries, 131 yards. No touchdowns for Todd Gurley, though, however. It's unfortunate. wonder how we got them. Let's go to the podium. I want to see the podium. I want to see the players hold the trophy. I don't care about the confetti. There we go. Todd Gurley, Chance Chung, wearing number eight. Stefan Diggs. I don't know who else is out there. Who is with the... Uh, CJ Mosley? Did I say that already? No, who's in the back? That's Todd Gurley. Okay. All the dreadlocks are accounted for. But uh, yeah, that's the team. Pretty good team at that. Did we give Chance Chung number eight? To kind of make fun of somebody in particular? No, it just happened randomly. Sometimes you get happy accidents. I don't know why I'm taking casual shots at Matt Schaub. I guess nobody's safe. You don't even have to be, you know, relevant. Or even necessarily good at all. But yeah, Matt Schaub taking shots at him. I don't know why. Um, yeah, good team though. I have high hopes for, for the offseason. I mean, Super Bowl champs in year two. There's not much more you can ask for, right? Ooh, Brandon Scherf. That's right. Got to re-sign him. And Lane Yoder. Yoder Leahy. All right. Scherf and Yoder are both back. 
And I don't even know if I want to sign anybody in free agency. I assume some of the usual suspects will be here. Um, Vic Beasley probably will be here. He usually is. Uh, there he is. Jason Verrett is an interesting thing. I don't really want Vic Beasley as much as he would fit the scheme. Oh, he'd be so good. I feel like it's just too... I don't know. I don't... It's all like almost like I don't feel right going out and uh, and getting Vic Beasley. So I'm not going to. We're just going to go ahead. I'll see you guys at the draft. All right, so here we are in the draft. We have the... Do we have a top 10 pick? No. We don't have a top 15. 17, which I believe is where the Ravens picked uh, in this past draft. And 32, of course, we won the Super Bowl. We only have two first-round picks. I say only. Clearly, that's a decent amount of first-round picks. So I won't lie. The caliber of this draft is, is not that good. <laughs> If you go in and look at all these players, like, look at all these undrafted guys in the first round. Like, are you kidding me? Yeah, he's got to fix their stuff, dude. But, um, I think I'm just going to end up trading these picks for good players. All right, 17th overall pick, K1 short, and a second guess is Von Miller. Now we can trade Matthew Judon or Tim Williams. They're just not the right fit. All right, didn't really expect that to go through, but of course we got to come back with my rhyme. We have the sack attack from the silver and black coming back. It's a fact. He's going to get sacks, rack ups, sacks, uh, wearing slacks. I don't know. Matthew Judon, Tim Williams, and a first round pick. Guess it's Khalil Mack and Josh Boyd. Josh Boyd was just for salary cap reasons. Uh, I don't even know where I'm going to play all these new players. Khalil Mack can play outside linebacker for us. I can probably play him at left end and move Michael Pierce uh, to the inside, which is what I planned on doing. So that's a thing. Now all I need is a better outside linebacker, which I think I can play Tyus Bowser there. So it's pretty much trading for an inside linebacker. I have picks. What middle linebacker can I get for this? I'll take a Quan Alexander. Love me some Quan. Let's go ahead and end the draft. So I just realized this kind of turned into the blockbuster trade edition. We traded for Stefan Diggs. We traded for Ty Gurley, Evan Ingram. Most recently we traded for Khalil Mack. Traded for K1 Short at some point. We traded for Von Miller. We traded for a decent number of quality players. Jamal Adams, Carl Joseph. Jeez, we, we were busy. I definitely could have traded for a better offensive lineman at some point. But, um, yeah, this is the team. I'm going to upgrade just a little bit before we start. But, um, actually, nah, we'll just wait at the midseason mark. Oh, Kalimak, 27k XP. Maybe I'll stop and I'll upgrade a little bit. Decent team, though. Tyus Bowser, only an 80 overall. He's not exactly groomed to be the 3-4 dominant pass rusher that I maybe wanted at the start because we had Tim Williams there. We had Matthew Jude on there. Tried to play Tyus Bowser, a middle linebacker. Didn't work, but uh, now he's at a more natural position. 3-4 edge. Should be a good player. I don't know what's going on. We're 4-3. Four 4-3. and three. Four and three. How did we 12 and 4 to 4 and 3? I thought we were going to be even better. What's going on? I'm definitely going to upgrade now. I have to. We need to make the playoffs. I'm not going to win the Super Bowl and then, you know, have a Super Bowl hangover. Oh my God. The CPU signed Smoke and Jay. I don't believe it. Super Bowl. That's what, you know what? That's why we're 4 and 3. Can't have you. Can't have that. All right. 4 and 3 with Smoke and Jay. We'll see how we do without him. Can't believe he snaked his way onto our team. This is this is a much better team than last year. I don't know how we're barely above 500. All right, we definitely made the playoffs. As we go 13 and three, this is not a drill, people. This is not a joke. I'll show you the team schedule. No forced wins, obviously, because I think that's stupid. With Smoke and Jay, loss, loss, loss. Without Smoke and Jay, win, 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 win. You get the point. We lose three games with Smoke and Jay through eight weeks. In the following eight weeks, we win out. Jay Cutler, man. Divides locker rooms, even in video games. Chance Chung, 4,100 yards, 38 touchdowns, 10 interceptions, rushing TG2 slash TG3 because he wore three at... Georgia, I don't know, nearly 1,500 yards, 16 touchdowns, Kenneth Dixon, 18 touchdowns, just vulturing touchdowns away from Tiger Lee, Xavier Murphy led our team in receiving uh, yards as well as catches as, nope, not touchdowns, he only had seven, well, not only, that's a pretty good number, 1,200 yards for him, Stefan Dix had 1,000 yards, nine touchdowns, Evan Ingram, nine touchdowns, Sterling Shepard, six touchdowns, blocking, 
Offensive line performed really well. Defensively, we, oh, we have two players over 100 tackles. Von Miller had 104. Tackles for loss, 12 from Fletcher Cox, 11 from Khalil Mack. QB sacks, 11.5 from Fletcher Cox, 10.5 Von Miller, 8 Khalil Mack, 6.5 Tyus Bowser. Interceptions, 5 from Jamal Adams, 5 from Cedric Simpson. Look, look at all these picks. 4 from CJ Mosley, 4 from Carl Joseph, 3 Marlon Humphrey, 2 Tavon Young, 2 Quan Alexander. We are getting so many picks. Force fumbles, not really all that many at all. We're just getting too many interceptions. Defensive touchdowns, I see at least one. That's all we have. It's Carl Joseph. Show me award. Show me MVP. Goes to Russell Wilson. Chance Chung at number seven. AFC Office Offensive Player of the Year goes to Leonard Fournette, who's always a 99 overall. Chance Chung at four. Ty Gurley at five. Defense Player of the Year, Von Miller. Okay, CJ Mosley at number three. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Corbin Wagner. Any Ravens? No. Defensive Rookie of the Year, Barry Presley. Any Ravens? We didn't even draft anybody, so clearly not. But um, we do have a decent amount of XP to spend. 38k for Xavier Murphy. There we go, man. Did Chance Chung, did he make the Pro Bowl? He finally got quick development. There we go. NFL pass rating leader is a ton of XP. QB of the year. Two Pro Bowls. Finally gets quick development in the final season. Thanks. Fantastic work on that. 43k XP for Storner, who probably also made the Pro Bowl. Same thing with Nico Saragusa. Defensively, wow, almost no XP. How does that even work? Carl Joseph has under 3,000 XP. Marlon Humphrey has barely any. Tavon Young, barely any. Defensive line, barely any. Where? How? <laughs> no one's getting any XP. Sedgwick Simpson didn't even make the Pro Bowl. That's a... That's, how? He's a beast. Holy shit, how the fuck did Jay Cutler get back on the team? I just cut you. All right, Smoking Jay, you, we'll stick with you. I don't know how that happened. All right, this is the team. Bunch of huge upgrades. Syracuse up to a 92. Stoner playing up to a 99. Stanley, 98. Jensen, 91. Scherf, 97. Ingram, 93. Entire receiving core. We get Xavier Murphy up to an 87. Diggs, 97. Shepard, 90. Chance Chung's up to a 95. On the defense side of the ball, pretty well. It's pretty good. I am. I don't know. They're performing well, as I said, but I don't know how we didn't have a lot of XP. Got a first round bye, though. Let's go ahead and advance week so we have in the divisional. And it's the 10 6 Los Angeles Chargers. Here we go. Let's advance the conference championship. Can we go back to back? It's looking promising, as now we have to face the 11 and 5 New England Patriots. How much XP do we have? Because I might consider upgrading. Four and a half K for Chance Chung, who probably got offensive player of the week. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna upgrade him. All right, only one way to do it: send to the Super Bowl. Please, can we make it? We do, and we get the Super Bowl rematch against the 10 and six Falcons. This is the team. Even more XP for Chance Chung, who undoubtedly got offensive player of the week again. I'm gonna go right back into medium accuracy. He's up to a 93 now. The rest of the team, there's not really enough XP to make any noticeable upgrades. As far as I'm aware, they don't hand out Defensive Player of the Weeks. At least I don't think they do in this. Maybe they do. And I'll, I'll upgrade everyone. doesn't matter. All right, this is the team for the Super Bowl. Looks pretty good. No complaints. Cedric Simpson is an absolute monster. Like, oh, he got quick development. How do you get that? Did he always have that? I don't think he did. He has it now, though, which is cool. Not really, because <laughs> we're in the Super Bowl right now against the Falcons. 96 overall Ravens, 95 overall Falcons. Birds versus birds. I'm telling you, the bird race is taking over. All right, here we go. Two dreadlocked running backs in uh, Devontae Freeman and Todd Gurley. Here we go. Here we go, Ravens. Out to an early 7-0 lead. Justin Tucker nails the extra point, as I would expect him to do, and he does it again as we go up 14-7. 14-10 after the Falcons score again, but here we go, 21-10. No missed extra points in this entire thing, which is odd, because even Dan Bailey was missing him. But this is Justin Tucker. He's far better than Dan Bailey. Let's, let's be honest. 24-16, finish. Oh, my goodness. The Falcons made it close. It came down to a two-point conversion to tie and go to OT, and the defense stopped him. 24-22 as we repeat with the Baltimore Ravens two-time. Super Bowl champions, back to back. I mean, all time, um, it's more than two times. It's at least, 
three. I think that's all it is, though, because I know they beat the Giants in the Super Bowl. And actually, no, they did it again in 20, uh, 2012 when they beat the San Francisco 49ers. So, actually, was that 2013? I think it was 2012. It doesn't really matter. Uh, bottom line is they are four-time Super Bowl champions now. Dan Quinn is pissed. Todd Gurley with his second consecutive Super Bowl MVP with less of a good performance than he had last time. Fewer yards, still no touchdowns. I'm surprised Chance Chung didn't get it. He probably should. But we've seen the celebration. Usually I like to go out with them hoisting the trophy and then salute with my outro as the, um, as the, you know, the thing fades, Super Bowl champions comes at the screen. We might do it again. Same players up there, CJ Mosley, Stefan Diggs, Chance Chung, and of course, Todd Gurley. Let Chance Chung lift it up. There we go. MVP, even though he didn't get MVP or Super Bowl MVP. Um, but he does have it. Anyway, thank you guys for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Two times Super Bowl champions. I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy. Fuck, didn't time it well. <laughs> like, at all. This shit don't run well!